All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started with our face sketch. So remember, I want you to focus on achieving a believable head shape or face shape, and I want you to also focus on achieving effective facial proportions and locations of different facial features or facial elements, whatever you'd like to call them. I do not want you to focus today on taking it to super high levels of realism. I don't want you to focus on achieving a likeness to any particular person. I want you to focus on those things so that you can have a solid foundation to jump off from, okay? So in terms of my supplies that I'm gonna be working with, I have a regular Strathmore sketchbook I have two pencil grades. This is my HB pencil, which I am going to be using to create my initial head shape or face shape, as well as to lay down all of my lines, my guidelines, my tick marks, so that I can do my measurements because all of the facial features have to be placed in appropriate places. So we need to lay down our guidelines, okay? So I am going to be using the HP pencil for that. We obviously don't want to create those guidelines and tick marks super, super dark and apply a ton of pressure on our paper because we're gonna make a mess and they're gonna be super visible at the end. So make sure to have that in mind. And then I also have my 2B pencil, even though I'm not going to take this sketch, um, you know, to high degrees of realism or add too much detail to it or anything like that. I just wanted to bring in a softer pencil grade in case I wanted to define something a little bit more, create a little bit of contrast and interest in my drawing um, so that I can have a little bit of variation in that line weight. I just wanted to have two on hand at least. I have my um, erasers that I always have with me when I am drawing. I'm not really sure I'm gonna, if I'm going to use them all, to be honest. Probably I'm going to use this one most of all. But I also have my Mono Zero eraser, which you've probably heard me talk about before. It's great because it allows you to go in and erase little tiny graphite and sections that are very, very small. And I have my kneaded eraser, which I often use not really to, to go into tiny spaces because ever since I found the Mono Zero, I don't use this one very much for that at all. But I do use a kneaded eraser to do gentle tapping and remove excess graphite that is kind of making things a little bit too messy. So sometimes I just like having this on hand as well. Um, I also have my ruler with me because as I said, measurements in the initial phase of the sketch, it's just gonna be very important that we do our measurements and also do our vertical and horizontal lines um, as straight as possible. And I also have my cell phone on hand so that I can use my calculator to do a few divisions. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to explain everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our face shape. All right, so the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle or a slight oval as best as we can. Okay, so this is going to be the cranium. As we saw in... Um, in the keynote today, Loomis divides the head structure into the basic um, elements, the two elements that make up the head structure, which is the cranium and the mandible or the jaw. So this is the cranium right here. Once I have the circle or the slight oval or the cranium right there for me, I am going to create the second form in this head structure, which is the mandible or the jaw. And the way that I like doing this is I like placing a tick mark for myself somewhere around here. There is no specific measurement that I use in this um, part of the process or anything, but it is important to have in mind that the lower you place this tick mark, the longer your face is going to be. And the higher up, closer to the circle you place this tick mark, the shorter or rounder the face is going to look. So I placed it somewhere um, in the 1.5, 1.7 inch mark away from this uh, edge of the circle right there or the oval. And it's, as I said, it can be a little bit lower or a little bit higher than that, okay? The, the measurement is not 
perfect or specific for this part. So the next part of the process is going to be to close this so that we can create the, the face shape, okay? The way that I like doing this, and you can imagine two straight vertical lines going down either side of the of the head right here, if that if that's helpful for you. But once you have this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do something like this, and then I'm gonna try to replicate this as symmetrical as possible over here. So I'm gonna try to flip this and just replicate it to the best of my abilities so that I have somewhat of a symmetry going on in my head shape or face shape. Obviously, the smaller you make this line over here, the pointier the chin is going to be, and the wider the chin is, the more kind of squared that face shape is going to be. I'm gonna erase the lines that I don't need anymore. I don't need this curved line here anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. There we go, we have our face shape. So again, I am going to go over those steps so that you can remember them in the future. First, I created my circle for the cranium. I then placed a tick mark or a line right here somewhere below the circle, wherever I wanted that chin to end. And then I laid down two verticals for myself on either side of that circle so that I can start uh, creating slanted lines going inwards from there. And then I kind of approach this in, in one slanted line and then another slanted line, which attaches to the sides of that chin line. The next step is going to be to create our neck. I see plenty of beginners create their necks either way too narrow or way too wide. Um, a rule of thumb here, of course, are people, there are people with very narrow necks, long necks, and there are people with very thick necks. Um, there are always going to be exceptions, but as a rule of thumb, I always like making my neck more narrow than the width of the head. So if this is the width of the head, usually our neck is going to be more narrow than that, okay? And you can always look at yourself in the mirror. That is super helpful. It can give you ideas. There is honestly nothing better that you can do than actually use your observational skills to notice these things that we're gonna be um, just kind of constructing here in yourself when you're looking at a mirror and in the people around you. So you can start connecting the dots here and actually taking that information in visually um, in real life, from real life. Now, the next step is going to be, I am going to bring out my ruler and I am going to create a straight a vertical line and a straight horizontal line. And we have to make sure that these lines, the vertical and the horizontal, are as straight as possible because they have to divide the left and the right sides of the face as well as the top and the bottom kind of halves of the face into equal halves. Here we go, I am going to use my visual measuring skills and lay down a straight vertical line as best as I can. And then I am going to just check to see if I need to fix it. Okay, so it looks pretty good to me. I'm going to leave it at that. All right, so the next step is going to be to divide this space from the top of the cranium to the bottom of the chin into two equal halves. And you can go by your visual measuring skills again if you feel comfortable with that. If your visual measuring skills are already well developed, you can do that. Just make sure to give it a check at the end um, to see if it's um, if you're actually you know measuring correctly. But one tip, if you want to do this in a more kind of perfect kind of way, just to make sure that you are actually dividing this into perfect halves you can actually take your ruler and measure like how many inches are actually in or fit in 
from the very top of that cranium to the bottom of the chin. So for me, it's nearly six inches right there. So the zero is aligned to the top of the cranium right there, and the six is almost aligned to the bottom of that chin. So if I were to divide six into half, that's easy, right? Uh, we know that six divided by two equals three, so I could just go ahead and place that tick mark right here in the three, and then once it's, it's there, that tick mark is going to tell me where I have to place that, that horizontal line, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just um, align this to that tick mark and place my ruler as, um, as perfectly in that horizontal position as possible. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay down my horizontal guideline. Now, if you have a measurement that is not as easy to divide into two as six inches is, let's just say that you have 7.5 inches or 7.25 inches or something like that, then I would recommend using your calculator, guys. Just grab yourself a calculator, whether it's your phone calculator, your computer calculator, whatever it is, um, and just do 7.5 or 7.25 um, or whatever divided into two, and you're gonna get your answer right there, and you can just measure it out, okay? You're actually gonna see me use my ruler in a bit for a few of the other measurements that are necessary here in this first part of the process. So go ahead and help yourself with your ruler and your calculator as much as you need to, okay? These measurements are what are going to allow us to arrive at effective facial proportions. So take your time with this. So the next step is going to be to divide this line, which this horizontal line is actually our eye line. It's the line where our eyes are going to be placed later on when we finish with all of the guidelines that we have to lay down. And this is something that um, surprises lots of people who have never drawn a face before. They're like, oh my God, the eyes are definitely not halfway down my face, but they are. Right now, it may seem like the, <laughs> the person is gonna end up looking like an alien, um, because this part, you know, sometimes initially we think that the eyes are way higher up in our faces, but they're actually not. They're down here at the halfway point. And when we start adding in our facial features, it's going to look normal, okay? So this is our eye line right here, halfway down our face. Now, this eye line, it's this next step that I'm going to be sharing with you. This this distance, this width, from here to here, needs to be divided into five equal spaces, five equal widths. Meaning, the width of five eyes needs to fit in this space, in this width, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to place the zero of my ruler right here, and I'm going to measure how much this distance is in inches from here to here, to the other side of the head. And it is four point, almost, almost 4.7 inches. So if this total width is 4.7 inches, this is a weird number right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my calculator and I'm gonna just do 4.7 divided by five because we need five widths in there five units, and it gives me 0.94, so a little under an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that out and place little tick marks every 0.9 inches, okay? So we have one, we have two, We have so let me let me actually do these lines a little bit longer so you can actually see them better. So as you can see, I've laid down four little tick marks for myself along the eye line, along the um, central horizontal one right there, dividing this width into five equal spaces 
Why? Because my eyes are gonna be here and here. And I need to make sure that I have the width of one eye fitting in between my two eyes, as well as one width of one eye over here and one width of one eye over here. So a total of five eyes should fit in there. And this is huge. I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you started out by drawing cartoons, <laughs> but usually cartoon characters have huge eyes. I started out um, drawing anime when I was like 13 years old. The, those eyes were huge and it took me a while. Um, and even nowadays, I still find myself drawing my eyes way too big, especially if I'm drawing um, something from imagination. So this, uh, this, what we did right here, these measurements are gonna help us make sure that our eyes are actual, um, they're actually believable proportions, okay? If we didn't have these tick marks right here, it would be super easy to make them very large. So the next step is going to be to add in our hairline. Usually I add in my hairline somewhere around here, but once again, just like what we did with the initial chin line, you kind of have to use your intuition to lay down the hairline uh, or where the hairline is going to start. Measure an inch or so downwards from the end of the cranium over here or the edge of the cranium, and that's more or less where the hairline should be. Um, at least that's where I like adding it in, somewhere near there for females and even males. I know, of course, uh, older people maybe have receding hairlines or their hairline is higher up, and that is okay. You can um, consider that as well, but definitely, definitely do not place your hairline somewhere over here or somewhere super, super close to the edge of that of that head shape. Once you have your hairline added in, what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your ruler once again, and you're gonna measure from your hairline down to the tip of the chin. You're gonna measure that distance, and for me, it's five inches exactly. And you're going to divide this length into three equal parts. So what I'm doing right here with my calculator is I am doing five divided by three and I get 1.6 inches. So now I'm going to lay down a couple of tick marks right here in the 1.6 inch mark. So 1.6, 1.6, and this should be 1.6. Yep, pretty close. Okay, so now I have three equal parts going down right in between the hairline and the chin line. Okay, so we have one, we have two, and we have three. Three equal parts from here to here. Okay, so what are these lines going to be? This is going to be the line which is gonna tell us where the eyebrows are going to be. This is a line that is going to tell us where the nose is going to be, and this is, of course, the tip of the chin. Okay, so we have one last kind of measurement to do. Um, two more tick lines to add in before we start with our facial features. And this is going to be to divide this bottom third into three equal parts once again. So from the nose line to the chin line, we're going to be dividing this length into three equal parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my ruler again and measure this space from here to here. And I have 1.8, 1.8 inches, which I need to divide into three. So let me go ahead and grab my calculator once again, and I am going to do 1.8 divided by three, and I get 0.6. Gonna set this aside and I'm going to divide this into three spaces. So 0.6 and another measure, measurement going down, 0.6. So I've divided this bottom section into three equal parts right there. Clean this up a bit, okay, there we go. 
So there we go, I've divided this bottom section into three equal parts once again. So this line right here in the top third is going to be the opening of the mouth. And this is just going to be where the chin basically is or where the chin starts, where that kind of, um, whether it's slightly protruding or more protruding little area of the chin is. All right, so all of my tick marks and guidelines have been placed for all of my different facial features. I know where the eyebrows, where the eyes, where the hairline, where the nose and the mouth and everything is going to be, except for the ears, but I'm gonna tell you how to add the ears in just a bit. Um, I am going to be making my little drawing that I create right now available for you guys as a downloadable. You're gonna be able to grab that right below this class in case you'd like to have that as reference, um, in case you wanna print it out and see how I draw simple eyes and a simple nose and a simple mouth, you can just go ahead and download that and print that out for ideas. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in the eyes. So I just start by creating very basic kind of shapes for myself so that I can start visualizing where the eyes are going to be. And once I have those very basic shapes in there, I can start adding in, let me go ahead and erase the, the little um, tick marks and guidelines which are kind of bothering me at this point. They've served their purpose, so I can go ahead and erase them. Okay, so those are my very basic kind of eye shapes that I'm gonna be refining and adding to now. Now that I have them in there, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding a little tear duct. So all of these are um, kind of essential elements that any eyes, um, any eye drawing should have. Uh, if you wanna make them more believable looking, I'm gonna be adding all of these little elements that you have to make sure to add into eye drawings. But again, I'm gonna make them very simple and more of an outline sketch here. So, tear duct. And then I like adding in a tear line here at the bottom. And then with that drawn in, I can go ahead and add the crease. And then I can start adding in my, my pupil and my iris. She's going to be looking straight forward. Usually when you draw in the pupil and the iris, it's partially covered by either the top or the bottom eyelid. Um, unless you want that person to look super surprised or like their eyes are um, unnaturally open, then part of that iris has to be covered at least partially by either the top eyelid or the bottom eyelid. Okay, so for the eyebrows, you can just draw um, a vertical line going up from the innermost corner of the eye, from that tear duct upwards, and that is basically where the eyebrow is going to start. That thickest part or the inner part of the eyebrow starts. And then there's going to be a tapered end or tail to that eyebrow. Both in males and females, there's always going to be some kind of tapered little section, almost always at least. And this is the way that I personally like drawing that eyebrow shape, at least when I am drawing it from imagination.
Okay, so let's go ahead and draw the nose. So you can draw two straight vertical lines going down again from the innermost corners of your eyes from those tear ducts going down. Those same lines that helped you when you were drawing your um, innermost kind of edges of your eyebrows right now, you can just extend them downwards. And those guidelines are gonna help you know where or um, how wide to make your nose, essentially. You can see how my nose is going to fit right into this, this kind of rectangular uh, shape that I've created right here. And all I did was I drew three circles to help me start visualizing the central portion of the nose and the two nostrils. So that central circle is bigger than the two little circles that I created to start visualizing the nostrils. And then I just use those circles to visualize where the openings of the nostrils would be. And it's essentially this shape right here. The larger circle is the iris and the smaller one is the pupil. The pupil is the one that looks black in all of our eyes, but you're gonna want that iris to be partially covered by the top or the bottom eyelid, depending on whether the person is looking forward or down or up. Um, but usually if, if our eyes are relaxed in a natural kind of position, the iris is gonna be partially covered. So I just added in the iris and the pupil in the center part of the um, open eye eyeball section or the visible eyeball portion as best as I could. It's important that the pupil and the iris are pointing to the same way. If your eyes are looking to the right, then both of them have to be looking off to the same direction. Or if they're looking to the left, they have to be looking off to the same direction. Okay, make sure that the iris or the pupil is not too large and not too small. I also see a lot of beginners struggling with that. So let's move on. Now I'm gonna be adding in the mouth. And as I said, this is going to be the opening of the mouth right here. So this is how I like just drawing um, a simple mouth from imagination. This is going to be a girl. And don't worry, you guys, because coming up, I'm gonna have classes in which we're gonna be learning all about the anatomy of individual facial features. And I'm gonna show you how to draw believable eyes, a believable nose, and a believable mouth in a more realistic kind of way. There we go. We have all the main facial features drawn in. So in terms of the ears, I was going to mention how to do the ears. The ears are going to be a little bit above the eye line. They're going to start somewhere here and they should end somewhere here very near the uh, nose line is where the ears should end. So let me go ahead and erase this so that you can see this clearer. So those are little tick marks that are gonna help us know the kind of length of those ears, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw very simple ears right here so that she is not without ears. So hopefully you can see how she's not gonna look like an alien. You can already start noticing how this is not as big as maybe you may have initially um, considered it to be. Um, and the hairline is right here. So this is gonna be covered with hair, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and erase all of my guidelines at this point because I don't need them anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my drawing with my hair. I'm gonna first place my hair and then I'm just gonna go ahead and do some very, very quick little detailing and maybe just defining and quick shading. Okay, so hair. Hair starts here. Let's just say, since this is a girl, 
Um, and I'm gonna draw her hair going down like this. And this is this is important as well. Don't draw your hair from here, from the from the very edge of this. Draw, don't draw it like this because our hair has volume. You have to draw your hair going upwards from this at least a little bit, okay? So just bring, bring that line up a little bit because our hair has volume. And so you're gonna want to add that volume even for males, okay? So I'm gonna erase these these lines So the bridge of her nose is gonna be somewhere here. Just adding a few more details here. I'm doing some very basic shading. Perhaps some very basic hatching because again, this is not a shading exercise. We're focusing primarily on the outline sketch, okay? I'm gonna use my 2B pencil at this point. Now that my entire outline sketch has been created, I can just have some fun. Sometimes instead of drawing like individual eyelashes, what I like doing is just doing gentle scribbling, especially when I am drawing females. If I, you know, with, when I'm drawing males, sometimes I don't even add eyelashes. If you wanna draw a faint indication of eyelashes without having to draw the individual eyelashes, just do very gentle scribbling motions in this top little edge of the eye and it looks like eyelashes. Helps darken that top edge of the eyes. No worry, as I said, I have several great full classes that are coming your way on how to draw different facial features. 
So we're going in depth with each and every single facial feature, okay? All of them have important things, characteristics that you should definitely be aware of, especially if you're looking for higher levels of realism in your portraits. I even have a hair drawing tutorial coming your way as well. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Adding a couple of highlights here with my Mono Zero. And a little indication of a chin there. Okay, there you have it, my simple face. For this exercise, our uh, objective was to draw a simple outline sketch of a face that showed effective proportions and locations of different facial features. So I think I've succeeded at that. I'm gonna go ahead and leave my sketch at this point before I continue. Uh, <laughs> I could spend the rest of the day just adding to this, but I'm going to leave it at that. We have succeeded in our objective for this one.